Welcome to Kids Cove News. This week, Andrew is celebrating his birthday on June 14th. Happy birthday, Andrew. Guess what, guys? We leave for camp today, Yay. like right after church. Yes. We do. I'm already packing, ready to go. I hope I got everything. <laughs> I hope so. Boys and girls, we are so excited to spend the week with you at Kids Camp. And guess who is here this morning? in person with us to lead us in worship. Ooh, it's Yancey. And as always, Yancey is on iCampus Kids 2 today. Hello, Yancey. I just love her. <laughs> Boys and girls, right after we come back from camp, we will be getting ready for Vacation Bible School. That's right. So everyone ages three years of age through completion of sixth grade is invited to join us on July 18th through the 22nd from nine o'clock in the morning until 12.30 each day as we enjoy Spark Studios and learn that God's creativity didn't stop in Genesis. You will see the beautiful tool that you are God's workmanship as you learn to use your talents to bring glory to God. Mm -hmm. BBS will be filled with so much fun as we enjoy arts and crafts, recreation, games, large group worship, missions, and of course, we'll have plenty of cookies <laughs> and snow cones to go around. Did you know there will be snow cones every single day <laughs> at Vacation Bible School? Oh, I love it. So have your parents go online and sign you up now for Vacation Bible School at firstdallas.org slash BBS. That's, That's a wrap, wrap for, for Kids, Kids Code, Code News. News. See you next week. Oh my goodness, my name is Yancey. I am so excited that you are here at iCampus Kids with us today. We are gonna sing and give our praise to our amazing God. We can put our trust in him. We can believe in him because we know that our God is love. Come on, let's sing and give him praise together.
Hello, friends. Welcome to iCampus Kids. I'm Miss JJ, your Bible teacher, and I'm so glad you've joined me today. The Bible is God's Word. God helped men write it so we can know for sure that everything in it is completely true. The Israelites went against God again and again in the wilderness, even though God was faithful to them. They sinned against God again and again in the promised land, even though God kept delivering them. God raised up judges to save the Israelites from their enemies, but the judges could not save the people from their sin. God chose Samuel to be a prophet and leader. The Israelites decided they wanted to be like the other nations and have a king rule over them. God warned them it would not go well for them, but they did not listen to the warning. God directed Samuel to anoint Saul as king. Today, we're going to see what happened at the beginning of Saul's reign as king. Well, really, this happened after Samuel anointed Saul as king, but before Saul was really officially made king in front of all the people. I'm going to read from the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel is in the Old Testament and is after Judges. 1 Samuel is a book of history. It records true things that really happened with real people. The people we're going to read about today had real emotions about what was happening. To get us thinking about feelings, we're going to play Express It. I'm going to show you some emojis. You say what feeling or emotion you think that emoji shows and make the same expression. Express it. What feeling does this emoji express? Can you make the same expression? What situation do you think might cause a person to make this face? Express it. How about this emoji? Can you make the same expression? Why might a person make this face? Express it. Oh, this one is really sad. Can you make a really sad face like this? What could make a person really sad? Express it. What feeling does this emoji express? Can you make the same expression? What situation do you think might cause a person to make this face? Express it. How about this one? Can you make the same face? Why might a person make this face? Last one. Express it. Oh, there are a bunch of them. Make your favorite expression. Great job playing express it. Let's read the passage and see what emotions the people felt. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, Saul was chosen to be the next king, but not everyone was thrilled with the choice, even though Saul was tall and handsome. Really, the scripture includes the details that Saul was tall and handsome. Let's see what happened with the first conflict King Saul faced. I'm going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 11. While I read, make an expression that shows how the people were feeling. Nahash was the king of Ammon. He and his army went up to Jabesh Gilead. They surrounded it and got ready to attack it. All the men of Jabesh spoke to Nahash. They said, make a peace treaty with us, then we'll be under your control. Express it. How did the Israelites feel when Nahash came against them? It sounds to me like they were afraid. They even offered to let the Ammonites control them if they wouldn't kill them. That sounds fearful to me. Nahash, the king of Ammon, replied, I will make a peace treaty with you, but I'll do it only on one condition. You must let me put out the right eye of every one of you. I want to bring shame on the whole nation of Israel. Oh my! Express it. That was terrible. We don't have to imagine how they responded. Then all the people wept out loud. Express it. They weren't just sad. They were weeping. They were crying out loud. Just then, Saul was coming in from the fields. He was walking behind his oxen. He asked, what's wrong with everyone? Why are they weeping? Express it. Show how Saul looked when he wondered what was wrong. They told Saul what was going on and how the Israelites were being threatened. When Saul heard their words, the Spirit of God came powerfully on him. He became very angry. Saul brought his army together at Bezek. There were 300,000 men from Israel and 30,000 from Judah. Express it. What expression do you think the army made when they got ready to fight? The messengers who had come were told, Go back and report to the men of Jabesh Gilead. Tell them, by the hottest time of the day tomorrow, you will be rescued. The messengers went and reported it to the men of Jabesh. 
and made those men very happy. Express it. How did the people feel when they heard they were going to be rescued by the hottest part of the next day? They were so happy. The next day, Saul led the Israelites to defeat the Ammonites. Then Samuel said to the people, Come on, let's go to Gilgal. There we'll agree again to have Saul as our king. So all the people went to Gilgal. There, with the Lord as witness, they made Saul their king. There, they sacrificed friendship offerings to the Lord. And there, Saul and all the Israelites celebrated with great joy. Express it. How did the Israelites feel when they won the battle and made Saul king in front of everyone, including the Lord? They celebrated with great joy. What does it look like to celebrate with great joy? When I'm celebrating with great joy, I like to dance. So let's play freeze dance. I'm going to play some music. While the music is going, dance around for joy. When the music stops, I'll say something that happened. You freeze and a pose that can represent that part of what happened. For example, if I say the Ammonites came against the Israelites, you could freeze and a pose like you're crying. Or if I say when Saul led them to victory, pick a really happy pose. So with each event, pick a pose and freeze. Are you ready? Let's dance. Freeze. The Ammonites wanted to hurt, shame, and control the Israelites. That was awful. The Israelites wept out loud about it. Freeze. Saul got an army together. They were ready to fight. Freeze. The Israelites defeated the Ammonites. Woohoo! Yes, they did. Freeze! The Israelites made Saul king in front of God and all the people. <laughs> Yay! The people were so happy. I guess they weren't thinking about the warning God gave them, that it wouldn't go well for them to have a king. That day, they celebrated. Freeze! Pick your favorite part. Great job playing freeze dance. Which pose did you pick for your favorite part? One of my favorite parts is when they won the battle. God gave them victory. When some of the Israelites were faced with being hurt, shamed, and controlled by the Ammonites, Saul got the fighting men of Israel together to defend them. God gave the Israelites victory. Saul united the people in battle and the people united in the support of Saul as king. God chose Saul to be the Israelites' king. With God's help, Saul brought the Israelites together to defeat their enemy. God sent his son Jesus to be our king forever. Jesus brings together everyone who trusts in him and gives us victory over sin and death. And now it's time for the Wheel of Wonder! The time in our lesson when we spin the wheel and wonder. What will our Willow Wonder question be today? It landed on orange. Our Wheel of Wonder question for today is, why did God say they would regret having a king? King Saul was a great king. Oh, that might be how it seemed at first. God told them they would regret having a king, but then their king was tall and handsome and he saved them from their enemies. Things seemed to be going well. Could God have been wrong? God is never wrong. God is always right. Just because something seems to be going well, that does not mean it is ultimately good. Destructive things can start out seeming positive. God knows all things about all things for all time. We know very little. God's warning about having a human king was true. As we continue reading through 1 Samuel, we will see that Saul was not really a great leader and things went badly. Will we believe what God said is true even when things seem different? God's word is truth. The Israelites rejected God as king and asked for a person to rule over them. Then some of the Israelites rejected the man God chose to be king. 
But after Saul united the fighting men of Israel and defeated the Ammonites, the Israelites were united in support of King Saul. It was a great day of victory. But unfortunately, victory wouldn't last forever. Let's pray. Holy Father, thank you for working even on our sinful choices to accomplish your will. Please give us the wisdom to see when immediate success doesn't lead to ultimate success. Please help us to want what you want, because what you want is best. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, sweet friends, I loved studying God's word with you today. There's so much more for us to learn together. Be sure to join me next time on iCampus Kids. iCampus Kids, I'm Soldier Sam, and I'm in the Lord's Army, and so are you. All right. Well, I'm ready to play a game. If you're ready to play a game, someone say, yes, sir. All right. Well, here's what we're going to play. We're going to play that game, Soldier Sam Says. And when you hear those three words, you need to do whatever I'm asking. If you're ready, someone say, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Here we go, everybody. All right. You ready? Everybody stand up. Oh, I see some of you are ready. You are ready. And you didn't hear me say Soldier Sam says. Well, Soldier Sam says, stand up. Soldier Sam says, stand on one leg. Put that foot down. Oh, did you hear the words? Soldier Sam says, put, those, put that foot down. <laughs> All right. Okay. Soldier Sam says, jump two times. Jump three times. Oh, I got a few of you. Soldier Sam didn't say. <laughs> All right. Soldier Sam says, jump two times. Soldier Sam says, sit down. All right. Good job, everybody. Now I have a question for you today. Have you ever gone back to revisit a place from your past? Maybe it was your first home. You know, when I'm traveling through the state of Georgia and I get close to my first home, I get excited to drive by and look where I first started out and where I grew up. I remember playing outside and all the memories that I gained from being there and everything that happened to me. Now, I also love going back to schools that I used to go to and seeing how everything that I once thought was so overwhelming is exactly what I needed and not so overwhelming. Well, the Israelites went back to the first place that their ancestors set foot in the Promised Land. This is where they built a memorial of 12 stones after they crossed the Jordan River and with the Ark of the Covenant. Now, they looked back and remembered the power, the greatness, and provision of God. Gilgal was a place of significance. Now, you know, when we think about our world, we live in a fast-paced world that everything is how quickly you can do it, how quickly you can accomplish it, and how quickly you can win. Now, the next time you go back to your first home or visit a past school or anything in our past, what if we took time to remember how God has been faithful through all, faithful in power, greatness, and his provision? Now, the Israelites returned to Gilgal to show even in the midst of their present circumstances, they needed to remember. Let's reflect on the great things that God has done. And as we do reflect, let's grow in gratitude and hopefulness and know that every good and perfect gift is from above. I'm Soldier Sam, and I'll see you around iCampus. Dismissed. Welcome back, iCampus kids. We hope you've had a great time listening to our Bible lesson with Miss JJ, having fun with Soldier Sam, and worshiping with Yancey. This week for our activity, it involves a little bit of science and a little bit of arts and crafts. Ooh, I'm excited to see how these will turn out, <laughs> Miss Shelley. Me too. All right, so we are going to make craft stick bracelets today. So first you're gonna need giant craft sticks, mm -hmm. and these are pretty hard and straight, Miss Ashley. I know. How do you think they're going to make a bracelet? Okay, I wonder, maybe they're like those slap bracelets. You know what I mean? Okay. Oh. Or well, maybe, maybe. No, no, okay. not that way. Mm, okay. Boys and girls, get your parents to help you with this part. You want to put a few craft sticks mm -hmm. in hot, hot water. Okay. And you want to let them soak for a long time, so till okay. the water cools. But okay. 
be sure you do get your parents to help you with yes. that. I don't want you to get burned. Yes. So okay. you put it in the hot water and let it soak. So then you can take the craft stick out of the water and when you take a cup, you can bend your craft stick in a circle and when you do that, it will fit around your wrist and the cup will help hold the craft stick in place until it dries. Okay, so then it'll look like this. So once it dries completely, you take it out mm -hmm. and you can decorate it any way that you would like. That is perfect, Miss Shelley. I think I'm gonna write Proverbs 3, 5 on mine. That says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That is actually one of my favorite verses. I love it's that, actually, it's a good verse. I think I'm going to write Joshua 1, mm. 9. That. That's a great verse. I actually yes. have that verse in my son's room. So boys, you may mm -hmm. um, love this voice, verse especially too. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Perfect. Joshua 1, 9. Perfect. And I wrote Proverbs 3, 5. That's a great verse too, Miss Ashley. Boys and girls, ask your parents if they can help you make craft stick bracelets and show us when you wear them. We can't wait to see them. But let's close with one more song of worship today. We'll see you next week on iCampus Kids. This time of worship today is gonna remind us that the most powerful thing that we could do is to speak out the name of Jesus. I wanna invite you to sing this song with me today. It's gonna to remind us about the power that is in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we lift you up. We sing to you today. We worship you. Where two or more are gathered in his name, he is there. For all who come, who run to him in faith, he is there. There is power in the name of Jesus. against us now he is here i believe the word has come to silence every doubt he is here sing it out there is
is above every name. Amen.